Azerbaijan offers scholarships to Guyanese students and President Granger reminds church of its role in dissemination of information. It's Friday, August 23. We have lots to tell you today. A vocational training center established in the East Coast village of Victoria is targeting school dropouts and disadvantaged youths. President David Granger opened the Foundation for Real Christian Education Greco Training Center on Thursday afternoon. In his remarks, he reminded that the church played an important role in spreading education. The school and church were linked. And you'd see this in most of the villages in Guyana. The proximity or the co-location co of church and school. The village was the common ground in which church and school came together. The churches established schools which are very convenient for the villagers who wish to have their children educated near to their homes. So the public education system evolved from this model. The president said educational opportunities should be provided to all. Education unlocks opportunities for employment and empowerment and enterprise. It promotes great equality. It lifts people out of poverty. It inculcates values and teaches the skills necessary for economic development. The head of state also promised to equip the building with solar panels to help with the electrification of the facility. The objective of the center is to teach necessary life skills while at the same time sharing the Christian faith and rescuing youths who have dropped out of the school system. For InfoHub, Anara Khan. Ambassador of the Republic of Azerbaijan, His Excellency Elkhan Polokov, during a two-day visit to the Guyana summit, announced that his country is offering full scholarships to Guyanese. Ambassador Polakov paid a visit to InfoHub where he spoke of some of his government's plans to strengthen diplomatic relations with Guyana. Among these would be a revolving door with regards to training and education. A few years ago, government of Azerbaijan decided that since we had already enough experience in different spheres and we have what to share with countries similar to Azerbaijan, uh, they set up the scholarship for countries, members of non-alignment movement and countries, members of uh, Organization of Islamic Cooperation. Through that scholarship, uh, Guyanese can get access to the different uh, universities in my, in my country. These studies, the ambassador noted, were in different sectors, not only oil and gas, and go from the level of bachelor's, master's to Ph.D., Additionally, he said the door was also opened for training and collaboration in the areas of tourism. The non-resident ambassador also delivered an invitation to President David Granger to attend the upcoming non-aligned movement and paid courtesy calls to both the Minister of State, Honorable Don Hastings Williams, and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. the Honorable Karen Cummings. Guyana and Azerbaijan established diplomatic relations on September 1, 1995. For InfoHub, Anara Tolo Oil will soon drill its second wildcat at 18,000 square kilometers over in the block offshore Guyana, with results expected in mid-September. According to a report from Oil Now, junior partner on the block, Eco-Atlantic Oil and Gas, said that the Stanford Fort drill ship is currently moving to the Joe 1 location, located at a depth of 650 meters. It is expected to be drilled by the end of August 2019. In the company's second quarter earnings report, CEO Jill Holzman said that the drill ship is on its way to its next target in Guyana. Joe One, where we will, together with our partners Total and Tolo Oil, the operator, commence the spotting of our second well in the coming days and expect to have results in the second half of September. End of quote. Tolo Oil BV is the operator of the Orin Luke block with a 60% stake. Total E&P Guyana BV holds 25% with the remaining 15% being held by Eco-Atlantic Ghana Incorporated. Ituni residents will soon benefit from a newly constructed shade house, whilst others are expected to undergo agriculture training. 
This was disclosed during an engagement on Thursday with Minister within the Ministry of Agriculture with responsibility for rural affairs, the Honorable Valerie Adams Yearwood and a team from her ministry. Regional Agricultural Officer for Region 10, Derek Collins, explained that the 90 by 20 shade house, which will soon be erected in Aichuni, is aimed at making the community more self-sufficient. At the region level, we're going to provide everything to construct the shade house, including things to start planting in the shade house. We have acquired all of that. Now we're going out to communities to put these structures down. As we just mentioned here in Aichuni, we will bring the stuff down get the person to work on a self-help cohesion and put up their structure. Aichuni residents will also benefit from training in agriculture. According to Minister Adams Yearwood, the right approach to any agricultural practice is to first gain substantial knowledge. The opportunity is here for you to learn the right way. Because if you're thinking expansion, and I don't think you should just want to mine 20 birds and that's it, or 50. Come on, Guyana is going big, and you got to think big. And if you want to rear 100, 200, 300 birds, you can't have the same attitude like when you have 20. You have to know the right way to do it. Minister Adams Yearwood handed over two sewing machines and cloth to the Aichuni Super Femme Women's Group. She also distributed several David Chi School bags to primary school students who were present at the meeting. Reporting from Aichuni with videographer Mahinderaj, I am Kellon Rover for InfoHub. Still to come, community centers and a shelter opened in Linden, and a room of farmers encouraged to diversify. Details of these after the break. Are you ready to embark on a truly epic adventure to an undiscovered corner of South America, where some of the most spectacular natural attractions are unveiled within a beautifully diverse landscape? From the wetlands and savannas to the ancient mountains, magnificent waterways, and lush and rich in rainforest would provide a vast playground for some of the most exotic and breathtaking creatures on the planet, including many of the world's giant species. This untouched land of mystery and wonder serves up an exclusive experience for travelers. So are you ready for a new, awe-inspiring adventure? Welcome back to nature. Welcome to Guyana. Welcome back. The Guyana Forestry Commission will soon be able to access funds from the Guyana Red Plus Investment Fund, moving a step closer to restoring the commission to its rightful place. Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman told the press conference on Thursday that while the commission has been experiencing some financial difficulties, the government is working to return it to full viability. Included in the efforts are the use of funds from the Guyana-Norway Agreement and the sale of the Guyana High Street Georgetown building. The cabinet has given it in principal support and I have written to Minister of State, um, she being the ministry under which Office of Climate Change and the Project Management Office come, asking for us to start the process of actualizing that cabinet decision which came at the beginning of this year. In July 2018, Guyana secured a close to $27 billion following talks in Norway. Norway's government was impressed with this administration's 2025 energy mix proposal, Guyana's deforestation rate of 0.05%, and President Granger's role in championing sustainable development. Addressing the sale of the High Street Building, Minister Trotman said the stakeholders are working to ensure a transparent process. Meanwhile, the Natural Resources Minister said the Forestry Commission is transitioning from being just the overseer of the movement and trading of logs and timber to becoming a conservator of forests. He reported the 0.052 deforestation rate for 2018, one of the lowest rates ever recorded regionally, and globally. We um, have high demands being placed on us 
to ensure Manal Green State Development Strategy, and rightly so. Uh, and so forestry in the decades ahead will no longer just be the place that collects royalties for logs exported, but the place that ensures that you know the forests are preserved for many generations to come. Reporting for InfoHub, Alexis Rodney. Two community centers and a shelter were commissioned in Linden. The centers in Amelia's Ward and Blueberry Hill and the women's shelter located at an undisclosed location were constructed by the U.S. Air Force's New Horizon mission. At the handing over ceremony, Director General of the Ministry of the Presidency, Joseph Harmon, reiterated the government's commitment to building resilient communities. So Director General said the centers in Linden will provide a base from which they can improve the quality of their lives. Community centers must be used to promote development, to be centers of entrepreneurship, to hone in on the opportunities for nascent micro-enterprises and help to awaken the inherent entrepreneurial spirit and abilities of our residents in these communities. Harmon charged the residents to create a sustainable framework to manage the facilities. He reminded that the plan must be in keeping with Guyana's 2040 vision of a green state. United States charged the affairs Mark Colony said the construction of the centers speaks volumes of the U.S. commitment to developing a better relationship with Guyana. I want to underline that the multi-million dollar investment by the United States in this exercise is a small price to pay when it comes to increasing the quality of life of so many Guyanese and more importantly, increasing our partner nation's capacity. The keys to the buildings were handed over to minister within the Ministry of Communities, Annette Ferguson. Meanwhile, over at Camp Base Sawaya, five buildings were handed over to Chief of Staff, which were also constructed by the United States Air Force's New Horizon mission. The buildings will be used by the ranks of the GDF who are stationed at the location. Isaiah Brafitt for InfoHub. Residents of Parima in Region 7 have been encouraged to expand their agricultural production to further develop their community. The call was made by the Minister of State, the Honorable Don Hastings Williams, during a recent visit to the area. Purima is an Aracuna village in Region 7, close to the border with Venezuela. The traditional farming community is now faced with an issue of food shortage because of challenges with the weather and its impact on their crops. Minister Hastings Williams, during her visit, distributed food relief packages prepared by the Civil Defense Commission, CDC, to the villages of Purima and Kurukubaru that has been affected. She also urged the farmers to begin diversifying their crops. We have to start thinking differently. If the cassava takes nine months, we have to start thinking of other short-term crops that we can plant and use while your cassava is being matured. You can do crop rotation. The state minister also urged the farmers to consider the benefits of value-added production and promoting their products as a healthy alternative. People will buy it because they know you don't use fertilizers here. Many persons are becoming health conscious and they don't want to buy foods and vegetables that use fertilizers. They want to buy foods that's coming directly from the rich soil, which is healthy. So you have to start thinking in terms of that. Try to move from taking the raw materials to making other products. Minister Hastings Williams underscored that even with the imminent oil production and the revenues that will accrue, it is important to have a viable agriculture sector. Reporting for InfoHub, Natasha Smith. Before we wrap up, here's your GCOM tip for the day. Get your documents ready to register. You must have one of these documents, a birth certificate, a valid passport, adoption certificate, or a naturalization certificate. For married women, a marriage certificate is required, and for individuals who had a name change that is not stated on the birth certificate, a deed poll must be presented. Only original documents will be accepted. Get registered. It's part of the National Registration Act. That's all for today. Connect with us on WhatsApp, Facebook, and YouTube. Much more news is on our website, dpi.gov.gy, and pop over to Instagram for the latest photo updates at DPI Guyana. Your bridge and weather reports are up next. Goodbye for now.